Well, hello there, and welcome again to another Facebook Live. Um, the uh, the three amigos, there's myself, Bruce Ross, <laughs> Shira, and Mike Kramer. We're here again with you, and we'd like to share with you some continuing insights of what we believe are the ways that you can get business success without the pain. Uh, and we're looking to invert conventional wisdom. What you've typically been told is the way forward. We believe there are better ways. So this is part of our continuing improvement series. And today we're looking at cycles of improvement. That is, how do you actually, not just the philosophy, but how do you actually implement getting the most out of your people? Excellent. Thanks, Bruce. So um, we, we've heard people in, in the group say this. We've also seen it from clients. And you just notice this generally if you talk to anybody that's, that has a business or that works in, especially in a, a smaller, mid-sized business. Uh, they, re regardless of how strong the economy is, they're still struggling to get results, right? Everybody's working hard, but they don't always see the results of that, the benefits of all that hard work. And a lot of times people are doing their work differently. They're, they have their own way of handling whatever responsibility they have in their job. And people will see um, the same mistakes happening over and over, right? They're not stopped, they're repeated. Uh, and, and generally, one observation we see is that sometimes whatever it is they're doing just doesn't stick, right? It's not happening the way they were hoping, hoping to get the work done. Um, and a lot of this really is, is around alignment or coordination. Um, you know, the company's just not strategically or operationally aligned. Are you guys seeing anything, have any comments beyond that? No? Well, I think there's okay. a huge frustration in, in today's world. You just simply can't afford or you've got to minimize the frustration elements. We're living in a disruptive world. There's changes happening all the time. And what we need is how do we coordinate everyone to be thinking on behalf of the business, not just completing their job, doing their job, uh, but also thinking broader than that about the whole business. So that's the alignment I think you're talking about. And, and partly it's the attitude of the leaders to actually value what their employees have to say. And so it's also the obligation of a good leader to listen and open two-way communication between all key stakeholders, employees included. Yeah, and that, that's actually, to both of your points, that's, that's a good lead into this statement here that, that your company's future depends on your company's ability to adapt, right? I mean, we know in this world that it's constantly changing now, now probably more than any time in history, change is happening extremely fast. The changes are huge and that, that change is not going to change. Right. So, um, Max McEwen, uh, actually wrote this in his book, all failure is failure to adapt. All success is successful adaptation. So if you think about that for a sec, um, you really are forced to, to move and to change. Um, but I, I, would, I would note also that, that failure is, is part of the process, right? So just because you're failing doesn't mean that you're not adapting. <laughs> Does that make sense? Well, a lot of leaders are so afraid to make a change that they don't realize that standing still is also a decision that they make. So um, there's a risk in not adapting. There's a whole area around all this to reflection, update, feedback, responsiveness. I mean, and then there's time constraints. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So, um, We've talked about similar problems on prior sessions, but really what, what we think it comes down to for the most part is that you actually have activities, right? Your activities are not processes and they're reactive rather than proactive. And we said this before, those activities are likely not systematic. They're not repeatable. Um, they're not being followed. And generally um, in this kind of situation, People are not looking back and reflecting, um, you know, and, and evaluating what's actually happening or um, 
learning from those experiences and sharing some of those failures and um, maybe that inability to adapt across the team. And the, the, the end result is that you don't really have progress in the company. And that's, I think that's borne out by the studies that we've seen that show that eventually companies will hit a plateau and a lot of times that plateau leads to, to a decline in this. These are the, the problems that are behind that. So were you going to say something? I heard it. Yeah. No. Okay. So we're we're, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about how your employees really are the heart of of addressing all of this. But uh, hang hang on. So so what, what what are the symptoms that that you might notice in this? And the, a lot of them are are the same as what we've talked about before, right? You're gonna have rework and waste and and inefficiency. But when it comes to people, you're gonna see that they're less responsive. They're less flexible as a team. Um, People get frustrated. There, there's a. I think Bruce, you were the one that actually said that there's there's a stress, but it's unrelenting. You want to explain a little bit about what what you meant by that when you added that unrelenting to it? Uh, yeah, sure, absolutely. I think in these disruptive times, um, there is a chronic level of stress that's going on in the background, and then in the foreground at work, um, there's more and more problems going. People don't have the time to do the necessary reflection, to do necessary changes. There's not necessarily the coordination between people and systems and processes to get the focus. Um, it seems like it's just an ongoing and unrelenting stress city. <laughs> That's where yeah, I was going. And, 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 and one of the things, if you think about that, one of the things that happens then, then is, is blaming, right? People play the blame game and don't take ownership. And then what's the end result of that, right? There, there, not only are there no improvements or fewer improvements, but it's not as innovative, right? So your, your objective as a leader really is to leverage the knowledge and the ideas, the insights of, of all of your employees to improve whatever it is you're selling, right? For um, consistency, for quality, satisfying your customers, getting rid of the waste. And how do you do that? You do that by empowering your employees. So just contrast, you know, the symptoms you're seeing here with a flexible organization that competes effectively where everybody's contributing. Um, th th this is not that. <laughs> so wh what are the implications of this kind of environment? And this is kind of a, a progression or an evolution but effectively, you know, the, the work that's being performed, the approach that your company has taken isn't effective. Um, it's not consistently applied. And that the end result is poor results. Um, any knowledge that you have within the company isn't leading to better processes, better systems, better products or services, and definitely not any kind of innovation and, and where, where does that place you, right? As a company, your performance towards um, not, not just your goals and objectives, but relative to the competition of the market is going to be poor. Um, you're not as nimble, you're not as flexible, and you're not as uh, proactive. And a lot of times that's because the way decisions are made is it's anecdotal, right? It's not based on um, truly gathering information across the organization, right? Where people are contributing and sharing um, and enabling you to make fact-based decisions. And ultimately that, that means the organization is less strategic, um, operations are less effective, and they're not ultimately providing what customers are looking for. You know, Chris, as you, as you go through that, I think what you're identifying is that Continuous improvement is the heart and soul of an effective employee culture that drives excellence, where everybody is engaged in contributing what they know, their knowledge, their issues, their ideas for improvement. And that drives innovation, it drives excellence, and it identifies people who don't want to participate. So it basically is the foundation of a culture that 
propels an organization forward. And just imagine if you don't have that, maybe a lot of people listening, they don't have an organization where employees are actively contributing ideas. Maybe it's a culture where they've learned not to. And that goes back to the leaders teaching their own employees that there's retribution if you contribute an issue or you're going to get your friend into trouble or there's going to be some negative impact on you to identify something that isn't working. Instead of everyone working together to identify every single possible way to make the company better, to satisfy customers' needs better, to make everything work better. So it's just a sea change of attitude. Yeah, that, that's so true. In fact, as, as you were saying that, Mike, I was thinking back to really decades of experience um, <laughs> before we had a lot of this technology even and thinking of that approach. And I, I think it's a good lead into the, to the next slide. But we've all been in situations where we've been told what to do and kind of take your marching orders and, and move on. And that's, that's definitely not a, a collaborative or a um, learning environment where people working are working together like you described. Um, so we, we struggled actually a little bit in, in how best to depict this. So this is just an example. So don't take it as, you know, we're saying this is necessarily what happens. But we've, we've definitely seen situations where there's a top-down approach that says, look, this is the policy. Here's how you're supposed to do it. Here's the procedure. And then people get trained to that. And um, knowledge generally flows, you know, in one direction, right? The procedures are static. Um, training happens once. And then there's not really a feedback loop to modify as things change. And we, we all know that things change so quickly that um, the result of not being nimble and not just reactive, but proactive um, can, be a, can be a problem. So we, we think that this, again, is, is a backwards approach. Um, what, what we're really hoping to see is a situation where the people who are closest to the work, closest to the customer, closest to where the action is happening, are able to work together and have an influence on that, right? And so it's it's not just two direction or uh, um, multi, two two directions, but multi directional, I guess. So uh, before I stumble more on my words, we'll go to the next slide and we'll see if this helps explain it. So uh, imagine this for a moment, right? What what if you actually were able to leverage all of your employee knowledge and their insights and actually encourage them to report issues, right? Not be fearful of that, but to share their ideas. Um, and you were able to have the transparency to monitor what's being reported, you know, key issues, not every little thing, but critical issues from when they're reported to when they're actually resolved. And during that process, if people were, collaborative and and you honored that and respected it um it's a much different environment i know mike you've, you've talked a lot and we've, we've talked a little bit about it here but this this network of teams idea um is i think this is you know kind of where where the rubber hits the road right like people have this ability to update procedures and training and take ownership um, in, in whatever process it, is, process it is that they have their hands on? Well, all you have to do is do a simple Google search for the latest Charm survey, uh, employee satisfaction survey, and you'll see most employees don't feel recognized. They don't feel engaged. They don't feel like their voice can be heard. And this has a lot of implications to the organization, even beyond the culture. A lot of these employees simply find other work, which costs the organization possible amazing talent, but also cost. So this idea of a network of teams concept turns every employee into a leader of the work that they perform. And what does it mean to be a good leader of the work? It means that they're taking ownership of optimizing and improving it so that whenever there is an indication that the process can be improved, whether they come up with the idea or the issue or somebody outside of the process says, hey, I've noticed that you guys do something this way and if you just did it that way, maybe it would be so much better. Well, any, any chance that that process team, that leader of the work can affect change 
for the good is to be recognized and celebrated. So, and encouraged. Um, and by the way, supported by the leaders. That's why it goes back to the leaders. So this network of teams concept, it's fundamental to our freedom framework, um, is a sea change in most organizations in engaging employees, making them feel part of the process, and moving the whole organization forward in powerful and valuable ways. Yeah, and so you know everything we've talked about so far is part of a methodology, a framework, right? But then, so you can call that a system of management, but imagine if you actually had a management system that enabled that um, real time, pervasively throughout the organization to track all of that. And that's what we're talking about. And that's, that's what we're able to provide. So um, two things, right? Actually having a system around it, but an actual system, a management system that allows you to, to capture all this stuff. So, um, and you know, we'll, we'll give you a, you know. when you compare an organization before they have the system of management in place to after they have it in place and it's working well, it's night and day. One is an organization that is stressed and disorganized, lacks innovation, their employees are disengaged and you wonder if they're going to even stick around to an organization that's filled with positivity and innovation and focus on the future and everything is working well and also focus on customer satisfaction. The fog lifts, the stress lifts, and great things start to happen, including increased yeah. sales and profits. No, that's, that's so true. And so, um, so this, this isn't everything we believe, but this is, you know, the, the, relative to what we're talking about today, um, we thought that this, the, these are kind of the highlights, right? That, that ultimately your, the success of your company is measured by your ability to improve and adapt, right? And I don't know that anybody can really argue that point, but you actually achieve that success with a collective mindset across your organization where everybody's striving to continually improve because that, that is truly adaptation. Um, but it requires everybody to do it. Uh, otherwise it's, you're going to have bottlenecks and that mindset and, and Bruce, I know can speak to this, but mindset, eventually leads to behaviors, right? And behaviors are what lead to results. Um, there may be a couple other things in that cycle, but um, behaviors, there are, there are certain behaviors that, that we feel are non-negotiable. And we'll, that's a little bit of a teaser. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that in upcoming sessions, but we've, we've highlighted or addressed a few of those today. Um, what, what behaviors are, are non-negotiable. We'll get into more detail about it in, in upcoming sessions. Bruce, any comments on uh, how, how this whole mindset thing fits into getting results and making sure that everybody's working towards the same end? Oh, it's, it's fundamental. There's a phrase that beliefs dictate our destiny. And if the belief, and I'm not gonna go into it now, it's part of the mindset module and we'll start to talk about it, but it absolutely, the mindset determines the thoughts that you have, the feelings that you have, the actions, and therefore the results. And so the mindset, that's why we have in the Freedom Framework, it's right at the very core, understanding how the operating system of the mind. And therefore, if we have, we you know what is the fundamental belief or the fundamental philosophy of the company that totally dictates. Um, and so you'll see the behaviors or not, and that indicates a certain belief system. How do you change that? That's we need the inside information around how the brain works, uh, the mind works, and that's that's the other other dimension of what we provide is not just the systems, but also uh, understanding around the mindset. Yeah. So just to to um, give people a flavor of that, there there is a um, process and a method that you can go through to address all of that. Right. We're not going to get into it now, but um, believe me when I tell you that there is. Uh, we can show you how to do that, right? And so I guess, um, you know, just point out that we're, we're trying to get you to think about what's actually going on in your company. And, you know, to the same extent that we mentioned, there needs to be full communication, full collaboration, full transparency into what's going on. You know, to the extent you have problems, we, we want to hear that from you, right? So um, our you know, our offer basically is to um, 
avail ourselves. If you want to talk to us, you know, message us on Facebook um, to, to Bruce or myself to Chris. Um, you can always email me at um, Chris Shear at cofocusmi.com or um, you can take our success score and we're, we're at the moment we're offering that for free. We have a link here. Uh, it's a great diagnostic assessment that'll help give us a much more objective um, and, and proven assessment of where you are with your company. Uh, when you do it, just make sure you put my name, Chris Sheeran, as your business coach. We'll get that to you. And you know, what we would suggest is to just sit down and, and talk through it to understand what's going on in your company. If you don't take a success score, that's fine. We're happy to just have a conversation, but it helps ground us as to what's important to you, where you are, you know, and, and you know, we'd love to help you figure out a roadmap going forward to build a stronger company. Chris, they get a 25 page report about their company. So it's very, very insightful. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's amazing. I mean, the, the, it, it gives actual direction on what needs to be done, but also an assessment an honest assessment of um, where you are at the moment. Right. So it's, it's kind of a point in time, but it's also a future, future view of, of where you could be going and how to get there. Um, so it doesn't just say, you know, <laughs> you, you haven't done this. It suggests a, a roadmap. So it's, that's great. All right, guys. Um, I don't know that we know what's up for next week. I think we might have to, we might have to chat about that, but. Whatever it is, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> all right well thanks reach out to us if you have questions we'd love to talk to you don't be strangers and thanks again for your time we'll, we'll try to keep these things shorter as we go but um appreciate anybody listening to us okay thanks, everybody bye